About two years ago, I was basically stuck on a couch after two rounds of colon surgery within a month. Normally, I work in wildlife management and snake removal, so I enjoy being outdoors and active to say the least. Instead, stuck indoors, I was a little bit depressed, something I'm kind of prone to anyway. And I was looking for ways to distract myself, but I was bored and unable to escape my own boredom, which is the worst, right? So as a self-confessed animal nerd, some of the most fascinating conversations I get to have are with wildlife and conservation scientists. Sometimes these can be difficult. Australia, despite its phenomenally unique biodiversity, is an extinction hotspot. We've lost more than 50 animal and 60 plant species in the last 200 years. We have the highest mammalian extinction rate of any country in the world. That's 30 since colonization compared to just one in the US. In the last decade alone, we've lost two mammal and one reptile species. Uh, and plenty more are at risk considering ongoing rates of habitat loss and land clearing. Considering this, wildlife conservation in Australia is a hugely important but often challenging subject. Nevertheless, it was those kind of discussions I was after in the online world of podcasting, but without a lot of success. So I figured let's give it a shot. Why not, right? All I really had to do was float the idea of a, of a wildlife podcast past a few people, including my friend Christian Summers, who just happened to be in sound production. He basically ran with the idea, set up all the recording production, leaving me to contact various people I know in wildlife science and industry, and off we went. Our idea was very simple. Get our guests relaxed enough to tell some amazing stories about wildlife science. We do this by bribing these incredibly intelligent people with cake, <laughs> colorful drinks, and a couch where we can rant about animals. Works every time, I guarantee. Now, as a self-confessed uh, animal nerd, you can see right there, um, this has been an amazing experience for all of us. And uh, look, I could obviously talk wildlife all day, but if you don't mind, I'd like to just share with you briefly three stories that have caused us to create some change in our own lives, and we hope they inspire you to do the same. Starting with this. The night parrot, Pizoporus occidentalis. It's been called the planet's most elusive bird. Following declines likely due to feral cat predation, it was considered potentially extinct by the early 1900s uh, until a few records were collected from 1979 onwards. Recently, video and DNA evidence confirmed its precarious existence, and on April 4, 2015, ornithologists Steve Murphy and Rachel Barr radio-tagged Pedro, a live night parrot in a southwest Queensland reserve. We were super lucky to be joined by Mr. Nick Lesberg from the University of Queensland, who just happened to be a PhD researcher on that project. In fact, these are his photos that he sent through. Um, to get to chat with Nick, one of the few people on the planet to have seen this animal and heard its strange croaky contact call in real life was super humbling and a massive honor for all of us, and I think deserves just one more shot of that super adorable juvenile. Aww. Isn't that the coolest? <laughs> Moving on. Naturally, we're hugely supportive of citizen science projects, and one of the coolest that we've had a chance to not only discuss but also use uh, in our field shows is Frog ID. It's a free smartphone app, a groundbreaking collaboration with every museum in Australia, as well as several universities and zoos, led by the Australian Museum. Using your phone, you can record 20 seconds of local frog call. The audio and GPS are uploaded to the uh, Frog ID database at the Australian Museum to identify who's calling and where. We've also had the great fortune to meet Dr. Jodie Rowley. There she is, second from the left, next to herpetologist Scott Iper. She's Australian Museum's, the Australian Museum's curator of amphibian and reptile conservation, also involved in the development of Frog ID and looking at the data downstream. This data is hugely important. Frogs are currently experiencing a global mass extinction event largely driven by the fungal disease chytridiomycosis, as well as other factors such as habitat loss and climate change. Having this Australia-wide frog census will hopefully help scientists like Dr. Rowley understand where our frogs are and track any changes that happen over time. And anybody with a smartphone can get involved and help. Very subtle hint. <laughs> so, Christmas Island. Few Australian environments are more unusual. A remote, volcanically formed island 1,500 kilometres northwest of Australia's mainland. It's home to a bizarrely unique range of ecosystems and species. An unfortunate history of exploitation and invasive species means much of this island paradise is under threat. We crossed over to wildlife graduate, wildlife science graduate Hamish Noller and ranger Jason Turl 
over on the island assisting the Christmas Island blue-tailed skink breeding program. And here it is right here, this fantastic little lizard, Cryptoblepharus agariae, with its azure tail coloration. This uh, animal behind me is one of the island's uh, several extinct in the wild reptiles, along with animals such as Lister's gecko. Other species were even less fortunate, and I'd like to play you a little bit of audio here, courtesy of Zoos Victoria. What you just heard was the last recording of an extinct species, the Christmas Island pipistrel. At three to four grams, the size and weight of an empty matchbox, it was one of the world's smallest bats, sadly extinct as of 2009, an extinction that was predicted. We recently spoke with Charles Darwin University's Professor John Wynarski about his book on the extinction of the pipistrel, as well as conservation on Christmas Island. As with many island ecosystems, there are still clearly plenty of challenges. So, in just a few months, with the help of some incredibly talented people, we managed to turn an interest and curiosity into a show with a growing audience for wildlife science. We're truly proud that we can share these difficult but often inspiring stories with anybody who's interested and hopefully create some positive change for wildlife along the way. One thing we've learned about conservation during this whole process, don't be discouraged. If anything, our amazing guests and audience Demonstrate just how many people are fighting daily for the environment, and you can help too. Whether by minimizing your carbon footprint and supporting renewable energy projects, or by jumping on any of these amazing citizen science initiatives that are coming out, such as Frog ID, Hurt Mapper, Quest Again, Bird Data, and much, much more. Or by joining your local land care, land care and conservation groups and getting your hands in there, there's plenty of ways you can be part of the solution. For the truly curious, you can also always join us as we continue our journey into the forever fascinating world of wildlife science. As for anybody stuck on a couch or bored or just stuck in general, I encourage you to explore what you're most curious about. Whatever that weird thing is that lights your interest, when you get to share that with others, well, first of all, it can be a lot of fun. But secondly, those people around you can catch that fire and energy from you as well. At least for myself, getting to discuss what I'm most passionate about, wildlife, clearly, um, has been super illuminating and uh, has definitely gotten me off the couch more, which is the very least I could do for our native species. Thank you. <laughs>